Hunger for raw materials in our modern society appears to be insatiable. We dig for mineral resources all over the world, from the Jakutan steppes in the east to the Atacama Desert in the west. Diamonds, copper, oil, salt. A life without mining raw materials is hardly conceivable. And wherever raw materials are discovered, people are magically drawn towards them. Cities appear out of nowhere, become new home for the miners and their families. The village Kasreti, 80 kilometers south of Tbilisi, in the region of Kfemo Kartli, is no exception. Raw materials are traded worldwide, with prices determined by supply and demand. This sometimes leads to serious consequences for communities and for the mining industry. As an example, the gold price has meanwhile increased by the factor 5 since 2004. A cemetery, within the site of the miners' settlement of Kasreti. It appears to be modern, but frequently, when new graves are being dug, ceramic fragments, sometimes intact pieces of pottery, or even bones, are discovered. For us, the archaeologists from the Georgian National Museum in Tbilisi and the German Mining Museum and Ruhr University in Bochum, these discoveries open a window into the past. The objects discovered are traces from the Kura Araxis culture, whose people lived here more than 5,000 years ago. And another surprise, just a few meters away, directly on the trail. A stone construction and pottery. The archaeological research began. Laboratory analysis of the bones provided fascinating details. In the following years, scientists of the Georgian-German archaeology team examined the site which is located on a massive spur, covering an area of 60 hectares. Finding the ancient graveyard, we suspected that people may also have settled here. And we were right. Remains of houses, workshops, possible cult sites and ramparts between 3,000 and 6,000 years old. In 2015, another surprise. A tomb from the Kura Araxis period, covered with basalt columns and equipped with an access tunnel. Obviously, it has been used several times. The bones of previous occupants were carefully put aside, creating room for new burials. In spite of the many findings, we do not really know much about how the people lived during this period of time. But there is one thing that we know for sure. Those people were miners. Gold miners. Not far from this settlement, the Zaktrisi Hill, the place where the German-Georgian archaeologists' teams began their work in 2004. In Zagdrisi, the gold veins reach clear up to the surface. The ancient miners worked their way down on these veins, sometimes to a depth of 30 meters. In the 1980s, geologists dug a tunnel in order to investigate the gold mine. A stroke of luck. 
20 meters below the surface, they discovered an old mine. The shafts were almost completely filled with mining debris, yet they had still survived the ravages of time. Within the layers of debris, we repeatedly found charcoal, a timestamp for archaeologists. Thanks to the radiocarbon method, its exact age can be determined. Eagerly, we await the results. In a tedious work process, we cleared the silted mine. Year for year, deeper and deeper. Young men from the region did most of the hauling work. Some of them were still in their teens. For nine years, we were privileged to see boys turn into men. And strangers turn into friends. We found pottery, tools made from bone and antlers, and stone hammers. Again and again, a total of over 10,000 of them. As with modern hammers, they once had wooden handles, but not anymore. Finally, the result of the charcoal dating. A scientific sensation. The mine is over 5,000 years old, and therewith, the oldest gold mine in the world. But how did the people manage to dig this deep into the mountain with such simple tools? What did these tools really look like? How effective were they? And how much gold did the mines yield? So as to better understand the connections, we performed various experiments. Organic material dissolves within a few years, and so only the stone part of the hammer remains. A few such complete tools have survived the millennia in moors or salt mines elsewhere, provide us with reference points for a reconstruction. These early miners discovered a simple principle. Tools had to be harder than the material they were being used on. Alternatively, a fire could be set, making subsequent excavation easier. The amount of wood being used was documented, supplying data for a calculation of the ratio between wood used and the rock material removed. Crushing and grinding of the ore is called preparation. Just like the people of the Kura Araxis period, we were using stone tools. The grinded ore was washed in an old cistern nearby. The time required was being measured. Another question was, how much actual gold did the ore yield? Measurements with the X-ray fluorescent method provide information. More precise dates came from the laboratory later. We had to take into consideration that the richest ore had probably already been removed by the Kura Araxis miners. Paravani is about 50 kilometers away. A few years ago, archaeologists found a golden earring with a weight of almost 10 grams. Based on our findings and the experience made during our experiments, we assume that 5,000 years ago, a well-rehearsed team of eight people mined, processed the gold ore and made the earring in about a week's time. In order to preserve and protect this unique cultural heritage, in 2006, the Zakdrisi Hill was declared a National Georgian Cultural Monument. Eight years later, in March 2014, this protection was to be finally lifted. On Friday, 12th of December 2014, approval was granted for its removal and the bulldozers moved straight in. We only have sketchy information about the beginnings of mining in Zaktrisi. It all began at some point in time roughly 5,500 years ago. However, we know exactly when it met its end. And with that, one thing became painfully clear. 
everything that has a beginning has an end.